Thank you for your presence in this place. We ask you to take our souls to the grave and to teach us the truth. Teach us the truth to deeper truths. Reveal mysteries to us. Help us to understand that we should make the argument. And help us to live the obedience and to be a of the Lord so that we said um, some few weeks ago, the Lord is interestingly changing certain things with us. Challenges. I believe our faith is really challenged, and we are coming to a certain level of faith of, uh, of, of our faith in Christ, where many things that probably in the past sitting here tonight, it means that you are willing to really uh, move on, progress in your faith to a level that God himself is coming to you. Tonight, we're going to really talk on something that is, uh, is, is, is interesting, but it's also very, very challenging. Understand it, others will struggle with it. But at the end of it all, because of the Spirit of God and His presence with us, I believe that He Himself will begin to minister to us and give us a deeper understanding of the truth that He is really revealing to us. So, 
simply put, our theme for tonight is you have an obligation. You have an obligation. You have an obligation. You know, many of us as Christians have forgotten that we have obligations. So we can't live our life anyhow. We, we cannot walk anyhow. We cannot do things anyhow. We have an obligation, and we are supposed to live by that. Amen. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, you gave your life to Christ when He came to you. So, as that's why Jesus said. Are we all sitting here supposed to be disciples? Huh? I don't know what to say. Are we all supposed to be disciples? Oh, yes? Okay, why yes? Hallelujah. Go ye therefore and do what? Not make only Christians, but make who? <laughs> okay. Now, Jesus gave a condition. What is the condition? The condition of becoming a disciple. What is the condition? No, 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 say it well. Can you put that scripture there so that you can say it well? Follow his path from the night in the view. <laughs> Luke 9, 23. If you want to do what? Huh? So it is not if you want to follow me. It is if you want to be my disciple, then you have to follow me. So it is not what, following is not if you want to. If you want to be a disciple, then you have to deny yourself, number one. I can't stress enough on this. Deny yourself. I want to eat garlic today, but Jesus says no. I don't have that right. What he says is what? Is what what he says is what I do. So it's not about what I want or what he's saying, but what is God saying? Amen. So now say it again. I will say, if you want to follow me, he doesn't say that. Look at the what is there. It's not in there. No, no. <laughs> Paraphrase it. The way you are saying, I want you to say it from what is there. So if you say that want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself. You know, sometimes daily, and then do what? Now say what you want to say. The follow me. Now you see the follow me there. So it's not about if you want to follow me. If you want to be a disciple, then. There are certain things, there, it's, there's a certain criteria that you have to fulfill. Amen. Okay, you can sit down. Who wants to be a disciple? So, now, you tell me. Somebody give me one, somebody give me one, somebody give me one. 
because you do what you want. Yes, uh, you have to deny yourself. Let me ask some questions. You have to deny yourself. What thing? In what sense? Oh, you're not done. Okay, that, that's very good. So, who are you now? You are not yet a disciple. Uh-huh. Well, what is that? No. But I'm not a disciple. How can we reconcile that? Take a good out. Because Jesus didn't say be disciple. You see, this is where we have a problem in the church. Where we have good Christians and bad Christians. Where we have spiritual Christians and non spiritual Christians. Is there anything like that? We say it, but is that the truth? So, who is a good disciple and who is a bad disciple? I want us, I, I want this to be clear so we don't deceive ourselves. Beloved in the Lord, you can sit down. This is where the issue is. Where we have, by our own standards, have coined who is a good Christian, who is a bad Christian, who is a middle Christian, who is a, a not fully fledged Christian, and who is a fully fledged Christian, and who is a mid-range Christian, and who is an upper-level Christian, and who a Christian is what? A Christian. A Christian is supposed to be a Christian. So, <laughs> we will see something tonight, which I'm, I believe will kill you. Okay, so, deny yourself. Who is going to give you the next one? Uh, the criteria number one is what deny yourself. Number two criteria. But the thing is, then no, I don't. I, I don't want you. I want somebody else. That's it. If you don't own up, I'll call you. Let's think about something and say, it's there. You know where the trouble is? The trouble is that, what about if I say it and he asks the next question? I would ask you the question, you tell me, yes? Uh huh. Okay. You have to take up your own cross. Okay, I won't ask the next one. Oh, you should, I would ask, you want me to ask? He says I should ask. Okay. So what 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 does it mean by carrying your own cross? Okay, you can sit down. Okay, the third one. I, I don't want it. I want us to do the yes. Okay, please. Uh, the question you asked me. Uh-huh. My understanding counting 
the cost. That is important. Counting the cost. You know, Jesus in Matthew, uh, in Luke chapter 14 spoke about that very, very strongly. That who would want to build a house but could not count the cost? Amen. Many of us carrying the cross is tough. It's what we did. We did it two, three weeks ago. Yeah. I think last two weeks, last two weeks, what we did, suffering as a Christian. The kind of things we have to go through as Christians. What you know, we carry the cross, and he says, You too have to carry your own cross. Carrying the cross is not cheap. Carrying the cross is not cheap and it's not easy. And many of us Christians, when the cross is presented to us, we run away. We want Christianity to be smooth sailing. No conflict. Even when you sit in the church, even up there. Hallelujah. You think up there there is nothing. Even up there, you get to a place and it's going. It's more than even <laughs> the roots that, that are here, the untied roots that are here. Now, beloved, there is a cross to carry. There is a cross for every Christian to carry. And Jesus says that you ought to be ready to carry that cross. Your cross might not be my cross. My cross might not be your cross. But what is your cross? You need to identify your cross and be ready to carry it. Amen? And the last one, and the carrying of the cross is not like every two weeks. It's what? It is. So don't say that yesterday I faced a problem so today nothing will happen. It's a daily thing. You need to carry it daily. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, okay. So my question, I think this is the stage where the person comes and asks you if you are a child of God or a Christian. Because carrying your cross, that's that's a, a difficult task. So that's why you have to ask yourself if you are a disciple or a child of God. So I want you to ask yourself tonight before you leave here. And if you see yourself as not, then you need to be clean to ask the question, what must I do? It is about obedience. Amen. Are you carrying the cross? The last one. He didn't say go ahead of him. He said do what? If you follow someone, the person is ahead of you, you are behind the person. So what the person does, you see and you do. Amen. Many of us are ahead of him. And because of that, we don't even see. You see, instead of us really asking what do you want me to do, what we do is that we are already ahead of him. And we are doing what we feel we have to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are not really having him in front of us and he going and he, he steps here and we do the same. 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 If you do that, you will never be left. Hallelujah. If you have your GPS and you are going somewhere and the GPS is going ahead of you 
and he's the universe. So you always see that there is something like a, an arrow or a bulb or a light or something in from going ahead of you. So by the time you get to the junction, it says it's a hundred meters to the junction, and when you get there, then it will show an arrow that you have to go into. What about if you decide not to look at it, but you want to go ahead and put the arrow in behind you? How would you get to your destination? What will happen? What, what do you think will happen? You'll be lost. How many of us are lost because we have gone ahead of Jesus? That's the issue. That's the issue. That's the reality of what is happening today. But my prayer is that when we go into night, and if God permits and we finish, praise the Lord. If we don't, next week we'll continue. But what we're going to do in probably this day, today, this, uh, today and next week, it's supposed to really create an awareness in you, bring you to a certain point where you ask your question, yourself a question, where I am now? Do I need to make a, some changes? Have I even started at all? You, some of us, we have to ask ourselves, are we really in need of Jesus? We need to. Amen. My prayer is that you ask that question today rather than when Jesus comes. Because if you ask yourself today, you can make amends. Amen. Okay. So we have an obligation. Every Christian, each and every one of us has an obligation to live the life that Christ wants us to live. The life of the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. We've been called to live a certain kind of life. We've been called not to really do what we feel to do. Because one thing we need to understand is that we are, by nature, sinful. So if we decide to do what we want to do, we're going to live by our old nature. Amen. Okay. Let's look at Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, saying what he said in Luke chapter 13, verses 6 to 9. The parable of the barren fig tree. Then he told this parable. Listen. Then he did what? He told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. Beloved, if you plant an whatever, maybe tomatoes in three months. When you do, what do you expect to find? Fruit. Okay. All right. Tomato fruit. Okay. Anyone else? What do you, you what do you what do you expect to, to find? Uh, Maca fruit. Huh? There is a mic for you. Tomato fruit. So because you planted tomato, so in three months when you go there, you are expecting to go and do what? Harvest. Hallelujah. So what does it mean? It means that that seed that you planted has an obligation on it to really do what? To produce. So Jesus is saying that a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard and he went to look for fruit on it. Why? Because the, that tree over there is obligated to bear fruit. So when he went there, his expectation was that he will have a fruit on that tree, so he will take it. Okay, next verse. So he said to the man who took the care of the vineyard, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Do what? Do what? Why? He's using the soil. He said, no matter what, okay. why should it use up the soil and not bear fruit? Why should you sit in church and hear the word and nothing happen? Why do you read the Bible and no change happens to your life? That's the same question. Why are you using the soil but yet producing nothing? Because you are a fig tree 
and you are obligated that as long as you stand in that so you get rain, you get everything you need to do what they do. And for three years, nothing. So, he said to the man, let go to the next verse. Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I will dig around it and fertilize it. Okay, Lord, don't, don't take them now. Give me an opportunity to preach to them another year. And let's see what happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 9. If it bears fruit next year, if not, if not, how many of us will Jesus cut down if he comes to it? Mother. It's not about how much cars you can buy, or how much connections you can build, or how much money you can have in your pockets, or how much advantage you have. Hallelujah. It's not about that. It's about being obedient to God. Being like the man of God. Let me preach to you today. If you are going to do the difference in the world, then you are obligated to do so. Do what? Hebrews chapter 6. Yes, you can. Seven and eight. Is it a question or contribution or something? Okay, all right. The fruit in the Bible is not about that. It just says that the fruit of the Spirit. It's, it, it's all a combination. It's not just the fruit of the Spirit, but as a Christian, you need to bear the fruit of the Spirit, which you will get there, definitely you get there. But yes, you have to bear fruit of doing so as well. So it is not just about one thing. It's a, it's a myriad of things, a group of things, a lot of things. Hallelujah. But the Spirit is going to lead you to walk in that direction, to really bear the fruit that He's expecting you to do what to bear. So it is not just about really. Uh, doing one thing and then limiting yourself and getting yourself in that corner. That is why Jesus was even telling the disciples, don't be too excited that you are casting out demons. Because that's not the only thing. Because some people, when they cast out demons, like Jesus said, that I, I never knew you. Casting out demons is, is part of, of, of the deal. You need to, as a Christian, that the Spirit of God lives in you. You need to begin to manifest that. You need to really heal the sick. And they did all that. But he still said that he never knew them. Because they didn't bear any. The fruit. You see, what we need to understand is that this journey that we are really going is not a journey that is one way. Amen. It's a journey that we need to consistently submit to the spirit. That is why he said daily. We are daily being transformed. It's not a one-off thing that Oh, okay, today I am this, and then that's the end of the story. That is why we grow from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Because today I am here, but tomorrow, as I grow, I'm going to be lifted up to this place. And the fruit that I bear here is definitely going to be different from... Because if today I am really, uh, let's say, winning one soul, I'm going to get to a place that I'm going to win thousands of souls, like, like the Billy Grahams and the, you understand? So it's not like a one-off thing, but it's a progressive thing and it's a consistent growth that you need to really go through. So it's not one thing that, okay, I'm, I'm winning so, so that's the end of the story. No, you ought to bear the fruit of the Spirit, which basically will have to, if the Spirit of God lives in you, it's a manifestation that has to be, I mean, seen by people as well. Amen. Okay, good. Now let's read that. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those who, for whom it is farmed, receive the blessing of God. A land that is receiving rain has to produce a crop that is useful. 
Amen. Verse 8. But land that produces tons and testels, the land that is receiving rain from God is not supposed to produce tons and testels. Hallelujah. It is supposed to, so we as Christians, we're not supposed to produce what? Tons and testels. The one that has called us, we need to produce crop that is useful to him. So if we begin to produce something else, then that land is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. And in the end, it will be... You see, this is a kind of a process that we go through. And if we don't change and we still keep staying in that kind of place, beloved, let us not deceive ourselves. Let us not really continue to tickle ourselves to make us feel good. Because many of us, we're tickling ourselves. The feel-good mentality must die. Because we try to make ourselves, like, see ourselves good, not in the eyes of God, but in the eyes of us. And sometimes in the eyes of our friends. My question is that when you get to your bedroom tonight, ask yourself, how does Jesus see me? When you're all by yourself, all alone, ask yourself, how does he see me? So, if you are receiving rain, there's an obligation. We have an obligation. <laughs> okay. If you, I, don't, I don't think I have time to read that. But it's not a lot. So, let's, let's read it. Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16. Let's look at the obligation of the salt and of light. You are the salt of the earth. Amen. If you are the salt of the earth, you have to really produce something. You have to. What is, what is salt used for? Anyone else? To, it, it gives you taste. Okay, all right, okay. But not even only that, but salt is also used to really preserve. Okay, right. But if the salt loses its saltiness, if the obligation, if what is supposed to happen, if what salt is supposed to do is not done, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer what? It is no longer what? What is he saying? No, I don't think this is complete. What's happening over there? Exactly. It is no longer except to be hallelujah. If you have an obligation, in fact, if you have an obligation at your workplace to do a certain kind of job and you don't do it, what happens to you? So why do you think that Jesus doesn't have the right to do that? Hmm? Because he loves us. Your boss doesn't love you. He hates you. Your mother doesn't love you. He hates you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. So, He give, okay, yeah, but he said that if he fertilizes you and then he comes the next year and nothing, what must, be, what must happen? So as for the opportunities he's given to us, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Don't tickle yourself. Don't try to deceive yourself. Don't try to pamper yourself. That's what we do. Oh, nyami do Oh, do Oh, nyami do Oh, yeah. But read your Bible. Read First Corinthians chapter 10. 
being the same God, and you have a Peter, a same Peter. He's the same God who said that if the light shall be good. But when they see him, did they get to the promised land? When he took them, where did he say he was taking them? Did they get there? If you mess up, although he loves you, then he will be the rescue for you. That's why last week he told us that. But if you mess up with him, hallelujah. Why do we want to believe that God is love and uh, he loves us so much that he will never punish us? When he's given us enough example, are we better than the people of Noah's days? Did he love them too? Oh, he did? Are you sure? Okay. So if he loved them and he did that to them, what makes you different? You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be. So if you are a Christian, no one can hide you. Who is a light? You do this to yourself or others. As soon as you get into the environment, everybody will know you. Hallelujah. But I, I will, in fact, let me ask you first a question. Today, in the Christian time, in the Christian and an unbeliever are about the same. Can you see the difference? Same ministers. Two of us. Same children. Two of us. Hallelujah. Same schooling. Two of us. Same. In a handsome room in a home. Hallelujah. Do you remember the guy who was reading the Bible in the first one? And he was serious reading the Bible. And the person was reading the Bible and just read the Bible. Then somebody, then he had a call. Then he picked the call. And he was still reading the Bible. And the guy was there. And then he looked up the person. He didn't know what he was talking about. But then he, he heard him say that, oh, yeah, eh, 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 oh, me do okra, me do, me do, eh, me nam, akaka, in fact, me do also so she's here. Now the guy goes, eh, but he was still reading the Bible. Yeah, but me do, eh, who don't pay for them, send me in there. Hallelujah. And then he finishes and he wants to talk to the guy about Jesus. Is it going to work? Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the reality. What we're trying to do, what God is mandated us to do, and what we're doing is that He wants us to be like Him. Because it is time. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, a Christian is supposed to give light, not a host of you, but a light of a Christian godly lifestyle to the people around him. So, if I am the light in this house, if I am the Christian in this house, I have to produce a light for everyone in this house or in this office or in this community or in this place to see that this is how Christians are supposed to live. Amen. So it's not about me saying to people that I'm a Christian and they ask, are you sure? They say, ah, that would you mean? May the elder war no abode. Hallelujah. That is not what makes you. 
a light. You are a light that is supposed to shine for people to see. Hallelujah. And you are not supposed to shine like that. You need to really, that's why he says that you can't light a lamp and put it under the table. Why would you do that? You don't shut it. Put it on the, t- on the table. So if you are Christian, you can hide. You can't put it. When it they give you a idea, you know that when people even know that you are Christian, two or four of them. No. Why? What is the problem with this? Everybody is watching something. And we are watching them. And when we go to the office, we are all discussing things, even though they don't have all the answers. Please, I want you to really understand something. Somebody said, I don't know, was it Paul? He said it this evening that whatever I do, I need to really make sure that it pleases God. Did you say that this evening? Okay. Anytime you begin to do something, if we can ask that person, I would like to know what it is about. Because that's why the Holy Spirit is there with us to really lead us. So if we ask him, he will give us answers. But the, the problem is that we're not asking the Holy Spirit, but we're looking at the next door neighbor what he's doing. The one sitting next to me, what he's doing. The one that has bought the latest car, what he's doing. That's what we're looking at. We're not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. We don't even care about what he says. Whether it is right or wrong, that's not. How can I make my next thousand cities? How can I make my next ten thousand cities? Whether I make it the right way or the wrong way, many of us, it doesn't matter. Whether it conflicts with my faith or not, that is not an issue. How am I going to make it? Many of I'm not saying everybody is doing that, but many of us, that's what we are doing. And the question we need to ask, does it please me? I'm wearing this dress. And you see, you can backlash me, you can do whatever, but the point I'm trying to make is that it's what you are doing pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, the standard is not what somebody else, because it's a person that has come on. That's not the standard. It doesn't, who even really introduced that? And which spirit is controlling that person? And have you checked yourself to ask that this thing that came, what is the mindset behind it? Have you asked yourself, but what is behind it? What? Why? You see, let me tell you, people create things for different reasons. Now, you jump on the bandwagon and you follow. Have you even checked why he made what he made? And what influence he wanted to play? You don't even know. And you jump on blame. And you're also going because everybody is going. You're also moving along because everybody is moving along. Hallelujah. Whether it's pleasing to the Lord or not, that's not your business anymore. You don't care about it anymore. But the question is, have you denied yourself? That's the question we need to ask. If you have denied yourself, then it's not about what others are doing or what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. Because you didn't deny yourself to the, your next door neighbor. Neither did you deny yourself to your landlord. Neither did you deny yourself to whoever it is. But you denied yourself so Jesus can take it. Hallelujah. And when you did that, there was an application. Hallelujah. 16, and then I'm moving on. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, what you are doing, are people glorifying God or saying that what we can do is enough? 
Anytime anyone says that to you, you are disgracing them. He says that your light should shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify. Is your life glorifying God? That's the that's the that's the standard. Is your life or is my life glorifying God? Hallelujah. Listen, listen, it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter how many people pat you on the back. What matters is that that Jesus has been glorified. Hallelujah. Does he approve of it? And if you can ask him, and if you can check with him, I believe that many of the things you do will be removed up from you along the way. Listen, the spirit of the flesh is not stronger than the spirit of God. It is because we have decided not to submit to the spirit of God. That's why he said in Galatians 5 that, be led by the spirit so that you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. Because it, he says they are in conflict with one another, and everybody is seeking your attention. But you have to make a decision to be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God is always there seeking to really lead you. Hallelujah. Hmm. I want you, listen, what we're doing, I, I mean, I know we don't have enough time, but we will continue next week, God willing. But what we are doing, I want you to really understand. Because we, we have an obligation, beloved. We have an obligation. We, we have been, we've not been called just to walk around. We've just been, not been called to just sit back and then fold our arms. We have an obligation. And what are we doing to fulfill that obligation? If we are supposed to really bear fruit, uh, fruit we need to do that. If we are supposed to be salt that is used to season, when we, you see, when you put uh, salt on marmalade, fish to make it marmalade, you, you, know, you know that? And the salt is not good. When you get, it will be rotten, and you can't use it for anything. The reason they can take cocoa from tar or whatever and keep it out so they come to Ghana and we still eat it. Is because it was well salted. That is why when you want to eat it, you put it in here for two days. Because the kind of salt that is in it, if you eat it straight away, you have to not eat. Amen. Hallelujah. If your mother makes you the soup, or your wife makes the soup and there's no salt, or the salt that you use is not good, what do you think will happen? Can you explain the truth? So many of us, we are like salt, but we are not producing what salt is supposed to do. The Bible says that when that happens, you are put wet, and then, okay, First Corinthians 6, you can read it. Do you not know, you and me, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? All of that is not my, is not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on the last short sentence. You are not your, you don't own your own life. Somebody owns your own life. Because, go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. Because, 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 so you are not your own. Somebody has bought you. He used his blood to pay for you. You were not, listen, don't walk around and say that, oh, I said I am a Christian. No, somebody paid a price for you to be able to open your mouth to say that. Hallelujah. You, you see, you, it, it is just because Christians, we've forgotten that somebody paid a price for us with his own blood. It cost him his blood 
That's why in, in the Agab, in your struggle against sin, you've never suffered to the extent of God in your life. He shed his blood. He had to be died. So he's saying that you are not your own. Amen. Anybody who calls himself a Christian is not his own. Because somebody had to pay a price for you to be a Christian. So, yes, I know how you want to live your life. But that's not it. There are standards. And if he did that for you, you have an obligation. Amen. Me and you, we are not having any palaver. We are loving one another. True of all. Is it going well tonight? Are we sure? Do you still love me? Or you are angry with me now? You sure? Are you really, really sure? <laughs> Hallelujah. Beloved, he says, Anahim. Anahim. With your body. With your life. Anahim. Whatever you are doing, ask yourself, does it honor God? Does it glorify God? If you begin to ask yourself that question, you will stop doing many things. So the life that I'm living is not about how much money I can get. It's not about what I ca- how much buildings I can put up. It's not about, no, it's not about that. It's about honoring him with my life. It's glorifying him with my life. Why? Because I am not of my own any longer. He has paid for my life. And if somebody pays for your life, he owns you. Hallelujah. He owns you. And because he owns you, you have to live your life to please him. Tonight, all this was introduction. Now let's go to the main meat. <laughs> Amen. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start from verse 1. That's why I said we can't finish because I need to build something up. My, my, my whole thing is going to come from, from verse 12. But we're going to start from verse 1 so we can build something up until we get to verse 12. Okay. He says that Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But you see that this no, go back to verse 1. What you see there, we have quoted it time and time again. But we don't read the rest. Hallelujah. But let's move on. Are we really in Christ Jesus? He's saying that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. My question to you is, are we... Are you feeling cold? Because some people are going like this. Yes? Okay. Okay, they are all on. So if you can just uh, increase. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And then maybe this one too. That is already 20 something. Amen. Okay. Verse 2. Verse 2. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh. You see, the flesh weakens things. That's why we are warned not to really 
gratify the desires of our flesh or of our sinful nature. Okay, so the flesh was, the, the law was unable to do certain things because of the flesh. Because the flesh really conflicted with it. And the flesh was too alive. So the flesh was really consistently fighting. It was in friction. Amen. Okay. But God did it. Okay. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. So the, way the, the, the law is not like weak. It is powerful. But the flesh was able to weaken it. The flesh would, I mean, so the word is saying that do not steal. But the flesh wants to steal. He says do not fornicate. But the flesh wants to do what? Hallelujah. Now, by the end of this, you, because you are fornicating, we'll see whether you are in the flesh or you are in the spirit. So, I am not going to determine who you are, but you are going to determine by the word of God who you are. Amen. Okay. So, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. So, this same flesh that you have, Jesus also had. So that he can become a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. When he was sacrificed, listen, it is the death. Hallelujah. That is why you need to die and I need to die. Because until such a time that we will die, we will be too alive to stand in his presence. Okay. Who do not, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be, so watch it. The law has a righteous requirement. So the law is not as bad as you think. It is the flesh con- contra- contrasting it and the flesh contradicting it and fighting it. That is what made the word not able to do, the law not able to do. what. So the law itself has a righteous requirement. So the law is not as bad as you think. Amen. Okay, so in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the... Now, we don't live according to the flesh. Why? Because Jesus has been offered. So, me and you, we are no longer supposed to live in the flesh. And if you go to Galatians, you will see what the flesh requires or what the flesh uh, manifests and what the spirit manifests. Hallelujah. <laughs> But according to the spirit. So now, watch this. This is huge. Go to the next verse. Hmm. Let's read together. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. Now, my question is that, what is your mind set on? That determines who you are. So, what is your mind set on? And if you know what your mind is set on, now, who are you? Because that's what is determining who you are. Amen. What is your mind set on? Are you living according to the flesh? Or are you living according to the spirit? What does the spirit desire? And what does the flesh desire? Who are you? You don't need anyone to tell you who you are. You can tell yourself who you are by reading this. I don't need to tell you who you are. Amen. I'm supposed to present the truth to you. And the word is supposed to correct. The word is supposed to rebuke. Now, in the face of the word... You now see who you are. Amen. So who you are, you know. Hallelujah. Hmm. 
sin has been condemned. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's jump to verse 9. There's a bombshell in verse 9. If you are a Christian, you are in the realm of what? And not in the realm of? Okay. And he says, if indeed Hallelujah. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Mm. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the Spirit. But it doesn't end there. It is not only by saying it, by thinking it, but if indeed, hallelujah. So you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit. Only if the spirit of God lives in you. So if the spirit of God doesn't live in you, you can't call yourself that you are in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hmm. And the next if in if and if anyone Has the Spirit of God. And this is where it is not about just, oh, me, some of you, I'm a spirit filled Christian. Uh, uh, oh, they, they are all nice stuff to say. But is the Spirit indeed living in us? Who do you belong? Let us not really, because you see, Bible makes us understand that the miracles that you want to see, the devil does them as well. So, the giftings are so powerful. But if you are going to just look at that alone, Jesus said, some came to him at the end of the story, and they said, we did miracles. He said, I didn't know you. So not everybody doing miracles is known by God. You need to discern what is of God. And the only way you can know that is when the Spirit of God is inside of you. I remember one Thursday, somebody asked a question here. Hey, but then all the people, you see, those people too, they have plenty of people who asked you to go there. Who asked you to go there? You went. Because you were sitting here. And instead of you walking according to the Bible, what he's saying, you said it's too hard. Amen. And you make a decision. And you chose what you want. Amen. I, I said it from day one when we came here. That anointing without character. Jesus himself said, don't be too excited about anointing. 
be excited that your names are written in the book of life. Because you can be anointed as much as you want, but you will never enter the kingdom of God. So is it bad? No. When John the Baptist sent to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? He didn't say that, go tell them that. Uh, he said, go tell them the blind see. They are all miracles. They are all of the anointing. Hallelujah. So it is not as bad as you think. Watch it. Watch it. And I, I think I have to really find time to do that with you so that we can really be able to really uh, draw the line, so to say. Amen. Watch it carefully. When Nicodemus went to Jesus, he said, if you are not of God, you won't be doing what you are doing. You can't do what you are doing. Hallelujah. So Nicodemus was marking Jesus by the anointing and by the, because Jesus said, I'm anointed to A, B, C, D. True or false? Yeah. But was that the only thing? Was the anointing the only thing that he was? The resistance to what they were doing and being able to speak the truth to them. Not compromising were the things he was talking about as well. Because no one can come and then challenge us like you are challenging us if the person is not of God. Because we would have destroyed the person long ago. Hallelujah. That is why when in the Acts of Apostles, they began to really uh, worry the, uh, uh, Peter and the rest. What did Gamaliel say? He said, we've seen one person come. When he died, his people scattered. Another one came. When he died, his people scattered. If this is of God, please, you can fight it. If it is not of God, wait, they will scatter. But if it is of God, you'll be fighting only against God. And who fights against God and succeed? That is why Christianity is up till today, still thriving. Everything has fought it, but Christianity is still standing. Hallelujah. Everything is fighting against it. Um, the devil himself is, himself is fighting against it. Um, presidents are fighting against it. Um, nations are fighting against it. Every, everything, your mother is even fighting against it. Hallelujah. But it's still there. And it's still thriving. Look at you and me. Everything, in fact, culture is saying that we, are, we, we don't even make sense but we still thrive. Hallelujah. Fashion is saying that we are tetequa, but we are yeah, tetequa, yeah, that's your fashion, hey, style, they buy me, trim, yeah, that's what you are. Yeah, trim. A bit trim, yeah, that's what you are. Hallelujah. You need to understand, look, that is why I always say that Jesus said something. He said, I will build and the gates of Hades. Let, let it come like thunder. It will not be possible. It doesn't matter. But anointing is good. I believe in it. Me, myself, I flow in it. But ye shall know them. Okay. All right. You are very good students. Let's move on. Where are we now? Verse 9. <laughs> you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. Why do you want to behave like you are in the flesh when the Bible says you are no longer in the flesh? The only reason, if you begin, if you consistently, and I'm not saying you may not really be tempted, I'm not saying you may not be attacked, I'm not saying, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you consistently are gratifying the desires of your flesh, ask yourself a question, is the Spirit of God in me? Because you see, the Spirit of God will be pulling you away from something, but the Spirit of evil will be pulling you towards it. So that conflict will be there. In as much as the Spirit of God is there, that conflict. But the moment you begin to really flow with sin easily, flow with the flesh so easily without... I mean, you don't even think about it. Even as you are sitting here this evening, you know that I'm from here, I'm going to my boyfriend, I'm going to my girlfriend. And you don't even think twice about it. 
Amen. The moment that, that, that thought and those things are flowing through you, you know that there is something definitely wrong. Ask yourself, is really the Spirit of God living in me? Amen. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to him. Who do you belong to? Which spirit do you have? That determines who you belong to. If you are really succumbing to the flesh on a daily basis, regular basis, consistently living the life of the flesh, ask yourself what spirit lives in you. And ask yourself who do I belong to? Verse 10. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. The spirit will give you life because of what? Righteousness. You die, but now righteousness manifests in you because you not, you are not living by your own self, but the spirit is really manifesting the righteous nature of God in you. Hallelujah. 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Hallelujah. You see, beloved, I want you to, let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 2. Verse 1 and 2, I mean, because the 12, I'm reserving it. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And listen to verse 2. But I know we are those who have died to sin. How can we live it in, in it any longer? If you are dead to sin, how can you be living the life you are living? Tell me, if you are saying that indeed I am dead to sin... Why are we still living the life we are living? And we behave as if there is nothing at stake. Verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We are dead. Verse 4. It's taking too long. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into the death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new... We cannot say we are Christians, spirit-filled, but live the old life. Hallelujah. So, let us begin tonight to ask ourselves... I am not asking you the questions... You let the word of God ask you the questions that you need to answer. You need to really begin to tell yourself whether you are a Christian or not. Who are you? Who are you? Hmm. Some people say, hey, kingdom, dear. That's right, kingdom. We live by the kingdom principle. That's right. We don't live by earthly principles. We live by the kingdom principles. And it's not bread and wine. It's not bread and butter. It's just, it's, it's, it's just not something that is easy. Hallelujah. It's the spirit of God who makes it easy for us. So even though you see Paul, a God who's saying that the person who owns this belt is going to Jerusalem. But this is how he's going to be treated. Then he tie his hands and then he says, this person, then everybody says, don't go. If the spirit of God is leading you, hallelujah. What did he say? He said, don't worry your heads. When I was called, the spirit of God told me that wherever I go, beatings are waiting me. So if I go and I'm not beating, then it means that God didn't send me there. Hallelujah. You are laughing. Beating is awaiting him. Prison is awaiting him. 
That is why last time, you know when he was boasting, when we read it, he says, how many times? No, that 40 minus 1, how many times? Uh-huh. Rod, how many times? Shipwrecked, how many times? Being in the open sea, how many times? And the guy is still going and he's still really bragging about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has a promise. You, Jesus said that because I was persecuted, you'll be persecuted. When you are persecuted, you say, this is not of the Lord. And this is, by house of who? What did he say? What did you sign up for? What did you sign up for? Did you count the cost? Did you? There's nothing wrong with your head. Just, amen. Hallelujah. I said there's nothing wrong here tonight. Everything is fine. Amen. I wish I could walk inside, but it's not possible because uh, you guys are afraid of COVID. Hallelujah. (laughs) Yeah, so we need to respect whatever they say. Else they will come and close us up. We don't want to be closed up. Amen. Yes, that's the truth. Do you still really love me? Are you still really in the spirit? Hallelujah. Mm. (laughs) Verse 5. For if we have been united, no man united, though. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, he, we will certainly also be united with him in a resur- resurrection like his. You see, beloved, we only look at what we're going through now. We forget about what is going to come. Any Christian who lives like that is not living with hope in mind. And your faith is even built on the kind of hope you have. Hallelujah. Do you have amplified on your, on your, on your screen? Okay. Romans chapter 8 verse 12. And I'm going to end. I'm just reading it and then I will end and then we'll come back next week to continue. Hallelujah. Okay, so then, so then, if all that we read in 1 to 11 is right, and you have the Spirit of God in you, then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. But that obligation is not to our flesh, our human nature our worldliness, our sinful capacity to live according to the impulses of the flesh, our nature without the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God is in you, you don't live as the Spirit of God is not in you. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God is not in you, your human nature, your worldliness, your sinful capacity makes you live according to the impulses of your flesh. Hallelujah. (laughs) And the the impulses of your flesh is this. The flesh that is there, that you see there is your nature without the Holy Spirit. So, (laughs) the lies you lie is your nature without the Holy Spirit. So ask yourself, the way I'm lying is the Holy Spirit right inside of me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What is what other thing? Flesh. I want you to tell me. You know it. You do it. So tell me. You don't tell me what you do. Tell me some, what somebody do, does. So what you say is not what you do. It's somebody's own. Gossip. Okay, fine. It's somebody's own. Okay. <laughs> Gossip is of the flesh. 
And if you gossip, it's your nature without the Holy Spirit. So if you are gossiping, ask yourself, where is the Holy Spirit in me? Okay. Now tell me what's the, not the one sitting by you, somebody you know. What, has, what, what do they do? Stealing. Okay. Stealing is of the, so if stealing is of the flesh, your nature that has the Holy Spirit inside of you cannot steal. But if you are still stealing, then it's your nature without the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, it begins to direct you. And you have an obligation. I said you have what? Just like the tree is supposed to bear a fruit, you have an obligation to live your life not according to your flesh. It's an obligation upon every single Christian. Hallelujah. We have, if the Spirit of God is living in us, then we have to live the way the Spirit wants us to live. The way the Spirit really will begin to direct us and lead us. We have an obligation. Many of us live our lives like there is no obligation as a Christian. We have an obligation. Once he puts his spirit in you, you are obliged to do certain things. To live in a certain way. You can't live your life the way you want to live it any longer. Because now, the spirit that is in you begins to rule your life. And that is why you say that I have denied myself. Jesus says, if you don't deny yourself, mm -mm, you cannot. You cannot. Hmm. I want you tonight to ask your question. Do, this question, do I have the spirit of God in me? If yes, why am I living the life that I'm living? Beloved, we have somewhere to go. This is not our destination. I keep saying it. We have somewhere to go. We have not been called to live the way we want to live. You are no longer your own. Kujo doesn't belong to Kujo anymore. The day doesn't belong to the day anymore. Ima doesn't belong to Ima anymore. Hallelujah. Dorcas is no longer Dorcas anymore. He, she doesn't belong to Dorcas. She belongs to the one who bought him, uh, bought her. And he bought you with his blood. Think about it before you sin. I said, do what? He says, if we continue to sin, we are trampling on that blood and we are crucifying him all over again. That's what Hebrews chapter 10 talks about. We are crucifying him all over again. Now, have you seen Jesus on the cross before? I mean, like in pictures, in movies. Have you? How does it feel? I mean, anytime you watch it, how do you feel? Oh, so sad? You sure? So the next time you sin, Hebrews chapter 10. Just, I'm, I'm closing. This is, this is, I'm just closing. Just let's close from here. And uh, I just want you to close with us. When you, you go home and you are reflecting on it, you will see the truth in it. Hallelujah.
just want to really be sure of the exact verse. Amen. Okay. Have you found it? No, it's not 23. No, I think it's it's the six. We I think we've read it already tonight. It's uh, six six. I I always just because they both basically are talking about falling away and all that. So okay, and we are for okay. No, just go to from four. Let's read from four. It brings a lot of... Uh, okay, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance, to their laws they are crucified, to their lo- what they are do- What are they doing? And what? And subjecting him to what? Okay. Now, let's now go to chapter 10. Let's go to chapter 10. From verse 29. Not from 28. 28, sorry. Just want to really do this one quickly. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think? Now he's saying that Decide your own punishment. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished? Who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them? And who has insulted them? Listen, there are certain scriptures that makes you go like, am I, am I seriously offending him? Am I? Because he says, and this is to those who are deliberately, what you see in verse 26, those who are deliberately, you, you intentionally, you, you live in sin. You love to do it. You just, I mean, and you see, <laughs> if the spirit of God in, is in you, I'm, listen, I am not saying that you may not do something wrong. You may not really fault. You may not go wrong in some areas you that's why he made a provision that if you confess your sins he's faithful and just to forgive you but some but some some of us we've made that wholesale and therefore we intentionally want to go and sin and then come back and then ask forgive me and he says that that is called deliberately doing what hallelujah and he says that if you deliberately keep on sinning then I am not saying it, but verse 26 says it clearly that there is no longer what? What does it mean? It means Jesus didn't go to the cross again or what? But you are not a partaker of that. And that is where he goes on and he says that you're doing what? You just... the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray tonight. Next week we will continue. Next week we will continue. We will we'll we'll start from the verse 12 and begin to build on it. We need to build on it. So next week, we're going to really build on verse 12 and then we'll carry on to verse 17. Hallelujah. You know, there is something happening in the world now. The devil is quickly drawing us away from the word of God. That's the only way he can trick us. That's the only way he can get us 
to do what he wants us to do. That's the only way. And we, listen to me carefully. And this is the prayer we're going to pray tonight. We're going to pray that, Lord, help me to submit to you. The only way we can resist this diabolical plan of the enemy to take us away from God. The only way we can resist him is by submitting to God and submitting to his word and beginning to live the word. Hallelujah. If you cannot submit to the word, beloved, you will never make progress. But the truth is that, how can I submit to what I don't know? How can I submit to what I don't know? Let me tell you something tonight. And this God is showing me, and I'm telling you tonight. And it's going to really increase if you don't deal with it today. What is happening right now is there's a fight. There's a fight with your soul by the devil to make sure that the word of God is not settled in you. So, the one thing that is becoming consistently, even though you are trying, difficult for you to do is to study the word. True of all. Those who are even trying are sleeping. For some, it is not even an issue. They, they just don't even take the Bible at all. They don't. Those who are really fighting to study, they are either sleeping, they are frustrated because they don't understand anything they are reading, they are unwilling to even seek help in understanding what they are reading, they don't make, want to make even investment in it. They will invest in everything except the word of God. What you got Bible? I what True or false? If you ask somebody to go and buy a Bible, ten cities Bible, rah. But if you say buy a Bible with like references that you that will make it or co a little bit of commentary that will make it much easier for you to read and understand he will ask you that you get what I'm saying 250 okay they will say that 250 Ghana cities for one bible But the phone they are holding is what? 800. But they buy that easily. They don't even think twice. Hallelujah. How can you reconcile this? The guy has just bought a car for 20,000 Ghana cities, but he can't buy a Bible for 250 Ghana cities. And he called that breakthrough. But buying a Bible for 250 cities is not breakthrough. The devil is in, I mean, and this is a conscious attack. And he's slowly dragging us from that which will let us grow. The only way he can manipulate you is when you don't know the word of God. So his program right now, last weekend they went to meeting. 
the agenda is to make some of you sleep. Anytime you take the Bible. So they have, they have assigned someone to you. The moment you take the Bible, it goes like... You don't have air condition in your house. But immediately, an air condition is provided. Hallelujah. Who? You or him? Kofi, is it you or her? <laughs> Hallelujah. With some of us, the moment you take the Bible, that is when the call that you are waiting for, that never came, that is when the call comes. Justin, are you, am I speaking to you? Because the way she's laughing, it's like somebody intentionally pressed the button. Hallelujah. The call will come. In fact, let me tell you, and this one I was taught, <laughs> I was taught at IHOP. They made us all sit in a room. We all sat in a room like this. And then, they gave us a Bible, uh, I mean, script, a verse to read, or like a chapter, or a part, or whatever to read. And then we began to read. And then, <laughs> the leader said that, keep writing what is coming to your mind. When we finish and we were reading, you will laugh. Somebody is sitting there. I am sitting there how many miles away from Ghana? And I'm thinking about something that I don't have to think about in Ghana. Somebody was thinking about market. Somebody was thinking about, I mean, the things we were, the moment we took the Bible and we began to read, all kinds of thoughts begin to come. I, at one point, I just asked myself, did you put the air condition off? What has that got to do with reading Bible? At the end of the day, I'm a tree one of no. I'm by me tree till the time I'm a part. Let me tell you, the moment, give me your Bible. The moment you picked up the Bible and you began to read, you need a lot of concentration. So you need to clear your mind of everything. But the moment you focused and you saw, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. <laughs> what has that got to Jesus being the high priest? Hallelujah. And then you go like, did I lock my door? Hey, we need milk in the house. Hallelujah. It's true, eh? Okay. <laughs> and the things that are coming to your mind, useless, exactly. Useless, completely useless. I'm telling you, when we finished and he said everybody should read what he has written, Master, there was not one sensible thing. Everything was rubbish. Instead of focusing on this, everything was rubbish. Hallelujah. on your feet.
Time that's what you thought, but ask yourself tonight whether the Spirit of God lives in you because the Bible makes us understand tonight that if His Spirit is not in you, then you don't belong to Him, and if His Spirit lives in you, you don't really live according to the flesh. So, if you are living according to the flesh, then there are a lot of questions you need to begin to ask yourself what runs your life? What rules in your life? Who directs you? And who leads you? Who are you following? Beloved, this is not about how much breakthroughs you get in the flesh. This is not about how much, I mean, cars you buy, money you have, anointing you have. It's about how obedient you are to him. How you following him? How you being led by the Spirit so that you are not gratifying the desires of your sinful nature? Some of us we desire even the anointing for the wrong reasons. We want to heal the sick so that people will see that we are somebody. That's not according to the spirit. It's according to the flesh. You seeking that to really gratify the desires of the flesh. I want you to die tonight. I want you to deny yourself tonight. I want you to let go of the flesh. So lift up your hands and submit to the King of Kings. And from the deepest place in your heart, just let go. Let go. If you will get deep into your heart and repent, and let go, I know the Spirit of God is going to really come upon your life even right now. You don't need anybody to do anything. It's how much you repent and how much you yield unto Him. His power will hit you tonight and will fill you tonight and will begin to do a new thing in your life tonight. So just allow yourself to die. Repent and yield unto him tonight. And let the spirit of God take over right now. For that's what he's here to do tonight. To completely take over. If you will give that heart to him.
Let's move to a new level tonight. Let's take Christianity to another level tonight. Let us allow him to begin to do something new in us tonight. Repent. I want you to pray. Repenting and yielding unto him. And allowing him to move. The Spirit of God is here. He's looking for a place to settle tonight. He wants to settle on you tonight. Oh, Namadonia, He's doing something with you tonight. He's right here. Moving tonight. His word has challenged you tonight. Submit to that word tonight. Yield to him tonight. Avail yourself to him tonight. Let him settle on you tonight. Let the Spirit of God come right now and settle in you tonight and begin to lead and direct you. His presence is here. Bring that which you are struggling with before him and ask him to consume it. Let him take over your life. Allow him tonight. Allow him tonight. Allow him tonight. Now lift up your hands unto him as we come to a close. Let the Spirit of God Himself right now settle on you and let Him fill you and let Him give you the strength to overcome. Let Him give you that strength right now. Let the Spirit of God do it right now. Holy Ghost, I thank you. I thank you for the strong move in this place. I thank you for the spirit of conviction tonight. I thank you for the spirit of conviction right now. I thank you that many are repenting, Lord. And many are desiring that you will settle on them tonight. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 just watch. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Spirit of God. Yes, yes, 
Yes, we say yes to you. Holy Ghost, we say yes to you. We say yes to you. Say yes to him. Yes to him. Yes to him. So he settles on you. And he begins a new walk with you. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Just say yes to him. He is right there with you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. 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 If you say no to the evil one and you say yes to the Holy Spirit, you will see that something is going to happen to you tonight. He's going to build a new desire in you because he's going to be there with you and he's going to lead you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just allow him. Just allow him. Just allow him. Just allow him. What a powerful person. Oh, just allow him. Just allow him. Allow him to touch. Allow him to move. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. 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 He's just moving across this room. Looking for a place to settle. If you will allow him, he's eager to change your life tonight. He's eager to begin a new journey with you tonight. So allow him now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Just leave. Leave everything to him. Let him take over. Let him take over. Let him take over that challenge. Let him take over. Don't fight with him. Just let it go. 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 Yes. Let it go. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 His presence is here. And he's not here just to walk around here. He's here looking for where he can settle. Don't fight him. Just allow him. Just allow him. Just allow him. He's beginning to give you strength to overcome the flesh. He's giving you that strength to overcome the flesh. Because you cannot fight this battle by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yes. 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 Moving our hearts. Moving our soul. Moving our spirit. Settle on us. Settle in our soul and in our spirit, man. And begin to lead and direct our lives from tonight. Thank you. Let it go. Don't struggle. Don't struggle. Just let it go. Just let it go. 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 He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Just let it go. And let him do it. All by himself. You don't need any man. What you need is he himself. Coming to you, touching your life, changing you. Thank you, Spirit of God. Oh, we bless you, Holy Spirit, tonight. We honor you and glorify you. Father, give each and every one of us, by the power of your Spirit, new strength to overcome the desires of the flesh. Give us the strength to begin to submit to you as we resist the forces of darkness. 
Give us the strength to overcome the weakness even in the study of the word. Holy Ghost, have your way in my life, in everyone's life. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise tonight. We honor you tonight. And we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't miss Saturday. I just want you to really understand that Saturday we're going to continue uh, with a prayer part. And uh, what we did uh, on uh, Monday and what we did, uh, what, what we've done today, we're going to really bring both together and we're going to spend time to pray. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is right here. His presence is really so strong in this room tonight. Beloved in the Lord, wherever you are, just want you to really lift up your bread. Just uh, let's be upstanding. If you are watching from home, just find bread, just find biscuit, wafer, whatever, and uh, juice, water. Just uh, find it. And um, lift it up before the Lord. Whatever you have in your hands, bring it before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the bread. We thank you for the juice. We thank you for whatever your children are holding. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus. That the same spirit who is right here in, 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 in our midst, who is filling us, let your spirit breathe over the bread and the juice. Breathe the breath of life. And let this bread receive life. And this juice receive life. Becoming the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus. Which have life. And as we eat and drink, Spirit of God, may our physical bodies receive life. May we receive strength. May we receive newness. May the forces of darkness know who we belong to. May the bread, which is now the body of Christ, and the wine, which is the blood of Jesus, refresh us, renew us, and transform us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, beloved, as you eat this bread which is in your hand, have an understanding that this has life in it, and it is no longer just an ordinary bread, but it is the body of Christ. Eat it with that understanding, and avail yourself for the life that is in his body to begin to move and rest in your life. Eat it now. And as we hold the cup containing the blood of the covenant, we drink the blood in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And that which he had to go through to shed his blood, to save us, to free us, to deliver us. As we remember it, may it be replayed in our lives. And may we begin to experience the deliverance, the freedom, and the forgiveness of sin. Drink right now. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. 
when the body of Christ and his blood begin to speak on our behalf, begin to move in our lives, begin to work in us, and begin to transform and renew us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, it's time for offering. Just lift up your offering unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that which is in our hands. In the name of Jesus, what we have in our hands has been given to us by you, and we give it back unto you. And Lord, in Jesus' name, as you receive it, according to your word, may you give back unto us, as you have promised, good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. We thank you that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory. The glory. The glory of the Lord is coming down. The glory. The glory. The glory of the Lord is coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. down. Come on, share. the power of God is moving amongst us and I just want you to really understand that we are in a season where God is really uh, renewing us but we need to avail ourselves, we need to yield unto him, I'm telling you, you can live that life if you allow his spirit to begin to work and move strongly in you, you can it is possible, hallelujah yes I love you so much and um I just want you to really understand that Saturday we will bring uh, both together and we'll pray into it to begin to really manifest what God is teaching us. Because we're not hearing this for hearing's sake. We need to begin to live it. Hallelujah. And if you can live it, you need to really submit totally. And we're going to really pray on Saturday. So don't miss Saturday for anything. Amen. Cut your sleep and then come. Let's let's do this together. I strongly believe that there's going to be a strong uh, move of the Spirit in this place. And uh, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit is going to really bring transformation in our lives. He's going to really light up a new fire in you to have a greater desire. I mean, a hunger f- uh, for righteousness just really desiring to do what is right before him. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, do we have any announcements? Or? Okay. All right. Okay. So, dawn prayer starts at 5.30 a.m. Please. It starts at 5.30 a.m. If indeed God is doing something in you, you realize that by 5.15 you are here. Because you are eager to come. Because you want more. Hallelujah. So I want to see you at 5.30 a.m. Let's begin to pray and let's uh, see what God is going to do with us. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. 
Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.